Mom takes baby's diagnosis into her own hands after doctors leave her no choice. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the Wow Zoom channel and activate the notification bell. As wonderful as modern medicine is, doctors aren't magicians, and sometimes they come across illnesses that they don't fully understand or know how to treat. When that happens, patients are pretty much on their own, and that can be a desperate feeling. Stephanie Smith's infant son, Isaiah, had a skin condition that doctors initially insisted was eczema. After all their treatments failed, the doctors had no answers for her, so she took things into her own hands. When Stephanie's son was just three months old, his skin broke out in a very bad rash that progressively got worse. Eventually, his skin was ruptured, bleeding, and leaking an oily discharge. His pediatrician and several dermatologists insisted that he had a bad case of eczema and prescribed him topical steroid treatments. They would help at first, but then his sores would come back with a vengeance. The cycle continued for weeks, and Isaiah's doctors were at a loss as to why he responded this way to the treatments. Eventually, the poor baby's hair began to fall out, and he was in pain nearly constantly. At five months old, Isaiah broke out in the worst rash yet and had to be hospitalized. After aggressive steroid treatment, the sores went away, but two days later they came back. Stephanie decided it was time for her to play doctor. She wrapped his hands in bandages so he couldn't scratch and pick at his sores. Stephanie then laid him in cool water in the sink and spent the next hour brainstorming. The new mother could barely touch her own son, let alone hug him like she wanted to. It was like he had no skin, she recalled. Every time when our skin came in contact, it would break open. I couldn't even put my cheek against his. In her frustration, Stephanie turned to the Internet for answers and was shocked to find many others with conditions very similar to Isaiah's. She learned that his steroid treatments may not have been helping him at all. Some people even experience extreme steroid withdrawal. So she stopped using his prescribed creams and started creating homemade lotions instead. She quickly discovered that a lemongrass and zinc treatment was clearing up his rash. After a few weeks of using her home remedy, Isaiah's skin began to clear. Ten months of being completely steroid-free, Isaiah was almost unrecognizable. He was finally a happy, healthy, almost two-year-old boy. Stephanie only had one thing left to say. We lost the first year of his life. I wasn't able to kiss him or hold him. But now we squeeze him all the time. He's a squeezable little guy. Stephanie's story also comes with a dire warning. We saw 35 doctors all together. They all said it was eczema. I went to show them all the photos showing how Isaiah's skin cleared up, echoing the fact to never give up, even if medical explanations have failed you. Susanna Callahan would not only agree, but firmly support Stephanie and her warning for others. As a happy, healthy young woman herself, an odd medical condition no doctor seemed to understand changed her life as well. Susanna was a successful writer at the New York Post and devoted girlfriend to the love of her life. Unfortunately, her bright future was put at risk when she began to experience a random series of strange sensations throughout her body. When she suspected bed bugs might be the cause, she called an exterminator. However, the possibility of creepy crawly creatures causing her health woes was quickly ruled out when the exterminator found no evidence of them. Over time, Susanna started to experience more paranoia, hallucinations, and seizures so severe that it eventually got to the point where she was unable to work. She was lethargic and in serious distress. Susanna had no choice but to be admitted to the New York University Hospital. Even then, it wasn't long before she began acting out, eventually becoming violent with the staff. Susanna would later compare this period of her life to something out of a zombie movie. She wasn't acting like herself and was frequently aggressive toward everyone. Even her friends and family felt threatened. Judging by her highly uncharacteristic behavior, Susanna's doctors believed that she was on the verge of a mental breakdown. They eventually suggested that she be transferred to a psychiatric facility. But before she could leave, one man made an unusual suggestion. Dr. Sul Najjar decided to take a deeper look at Susanna's condition. As much as this seemed to be a mental issue, he wasn't convinced that the cause was as straightforward as a nervous breakdown. That was when Dr. Najjar asked Susanna to perform a simple task, one that would test and change everything. All Susanna had to do was draw a clock. As strange as it was, from the moment she put pen to paper, Dr. Najjar's suspicions were confirmed. Susanna's troubling run toward insanity was not born only out of her own mind, but also her body. It turns out she had a rare disease that was now affecting her mental faculties in some very serious ways. The clock that Susanna drew in front of the doctor showed all the numbers on the right-hand side, while the rest of it remained blank. Apparently, this was a clear indicator of brain damage. 
Soon after the drawing, Dr. Najjar diagnosed Susanna with anti-NMDA receptor encephalitis, a rare condition that causes the immune system's antibodies to attack the brain. If this condition had been left untreated for much longer, Susanna could have faced a devastating illness or even death. Dr. Najjar ultimately saved her life. Thankfully, Susanna received the life-saving treatment that she so desperately needed as soon as possible. In a stroke of miraculous luck, she was completely cured after spending just one month in the hospital. Once fully recovered, Susanna wrote a book detailing her experience with the hopes of helping others with similar symptoms. Published in 2012, Brain on Fire was even adapted to a film in 2016 starring Chloe Grace Moretz as Susanna. Today, Susanna continues to share her story by speaking publicly about her experience with this illness. Her openness might save the lives of others suffering with untreated brain trauma. Susanna is well aware of how fortunate she is to have been able to resume a relatively normal life. She's not one of the 15% who recover but suffer severe cognitive defects, or even the 20% who suffer mild ones. The experience has, of course, changed her, though she's not exactly sure how. When I look at photographs of post versus pictures of pre, there is something altered, something lost or gained. I can't tell when I look into my eyes. Thanks for watching my video. Please subscribe to my channel and activate the notification bell to receive all new videos.